I just want to have um, Terry Sanowski, who's the um, chair of the advisory board for the Science Network and director of the Computational Neurobiology Lab here, and a Howard Hughes medical investigator, and a professor of just about everything under the sun, um, to say a few words um, about Francis Crick. I do want to uh, welcome everybody here on behalf of the Crick Jacobs Center for Theoretical and Computational Biology, which uh, I direct here at the Salk Institute. Oh. Francis, if he were here, would have much to add to our discussion. He was, as many of you know, a devout atheist which is not to say a militant atheist. He probably did more than anybody I know to demystify the nature of life and the nature of consciousness. In fact, he was working on that problem on the, his very last day here on Earth. And I think it would be appropriate to quote from his last book entitled The Astonishing Hypothesis, which as you know was the hypothesis that everything that we think and that we feel is a product of our brain which is something that is obvious to some neuroscientists, but not so obvious to most of the people here on this planet. This uh, excerpt is taking, taken from the last chapter entitled Dr. Crick's Sunday Morning Sermon, which is perhaps appropriate for today. General ideas, especially moral ones, impress on us at an early age, often become deeply embedded in our brains. It can be very difficult to change them. This may help to explain why religious beliefs persist from generation to generation. But how did such ideas originate in the first place? And why do they so often turn out to be incorrect? The very nature of our brains evolved to guess the most plausible interpretation of the limited evidence available makes it almost inevitable that without the discipline of scientific research, we shall often jump to the wrong conclusions especially about rather abstract matters. Amen. <laughs> Yo.